touch with Jay. Hello, how are How's you? Good? Yeah, I am good. I was speaking as if we haven't spoken before. We have. I spoke before 10 minutes ago to you, and you told me just how excited you were about the conventions that were running in January. Smooth, right? <laughs> A hundred percent. I think this is going to be a special year. You know, it's not the first year we're coming back after COVID, but it's the first year we're going to be full force coming back after COVID. And um, the lineups in both conventions have just come together in a way that's super, super impressive. So our inboxes have been bombarded the last couple of weeks with questions about the conventions. And I know people have been emailing Vanish Link customer service. So we just thought, why not just do a live stream and answer questions uh, to people who are here right now, but also just generally talk about the conventions, what we're looking forward to, why we make decisions that we make about the conventions. Just to be a fun 20, 30 minute live stream. So if you have any questions, put them in the live chat right now. Uh, whatever service you're watching this on facebook instagram whatever uh there is existing in the world right now that the vanish Stink team have hooked this thing up to yeah um so i'm interested andy in how you would describe to people watching this the difference in vibes between our two conventions so magi fest and the session they take place very close together uh the session this year is mid-january 13th through the 15th and magi fest is 26th through the 28th but they have very different vibes. How would how would you describe them to people? It's actually a tougher question. I don't know. Maybe you're a better person to answer that. Uh, because the session for me was always like the serious convention. Uh, that was started, what, 16 years ago now. And, and the whole goal for that convention was so a convention where people can go and study and improve as a magician. And that's factored in to the magicians that we book and continue to book. Uh, but actually... Magi Fest naturally kind of became a similar thing, right? I think everybody who goes to Magi Fest doesn't just go for a great weekend. I think they come away as a better magician. But because the two different countries, two different size conventions, the session is limited to 400 people. Magi Fest tends to get 1,000 people or so. Uh, there are a few differences, but really at the core, People are going for the same reason, to, to enjoy great magic, to be around great magicians, to session with great magicians, and and to just improve as, as magicians and, and be together. How yeah. about you? How would you answer that? So the main thing that you didn't touch on, but I think is important to know, is the session is a close-up convention. I mean, that's what it was founded as, and, and we've sort of migrated into parlor, but we rarely have like full-on stage acts to music. The way the stage is set up, there's not a curtain. So we really embrace and celebrate the core value of Vanishing Ink, which is like close-up convention. Mm -hmm. um, whereas Magi Fest historically has actually leaned stage. So we've sort of pushed it, you know, to our our uh, our zone of thinking, which is is in close-up. But I think that Magi Fest kind of has a more of a zoomed-out approach to all kinds of magic. We very often have kids' events for children's magicians. But um, the session obviously has a focus on sessioning, so jamming in the lobbies on close-up tricks, and that's a big part of it. And, of course, Magi Fest has a very social atmosphere in the lobbies, and it's a lot of um, good times. But, yeah, that's, that's how I would differentiate the two myself. You know, one of my favorite things is, so we do the session, and then a few days later, the whole team fly from London to Magi Fest, which is always so much fun. But getting to Magi Fest, starting up Magi Fest, and then seeing some of the same people that were at the session, like, what are you doing here? Like, yeah. it's so much fun to see that people come to both conventions, because I, I actually, I, they feel different, right? We always book different acts. It's rare that there's two acts that, that do the double with us. And Mark James, I think, is the only person this yeah, year. some years some years we do double up. But what, what I think is interesting to give insight to people who are interested in this sort of thing, we are often having people appear at either one, but thinking of how they might go over at the other. And by the way, you know, to speak candidly, it doesn't always work, right? So culturally speaking, there are some acts that destroy at the session. And it just goes so-so at Magi Fest and vice versa. Um, and we have to, and we've gotten better at thinking, you know, culturally speaking, in terms of audience vibe, is this a person or an act that can play at both or at one or the other? Um, room size has a lot to do with that. By the way, I want to shout out Tim Hannock. He, he uh, just entered into the chat. Kids event sounds like a good idea. Tim is a great family entertainer. Um, 
who performs all over the country doing big, big events. And uh, we have had him before to celebrate his book, and that was a massive success. So shout out to Tim. Yeah, hi, Tim. He rocked at Magic. Chicago. Yeah, so great. Um, so let's talk about the performers this year. And while we're talking about that, we should also talk about the, the differences between the performers we sometimes book, right, at each convention. You touched on it. but So the session this year, our guest of honor is Richard Turner. And there's a reason we book people for the session. It's because we know they will hang out and session, hence the name of the convention. Uh, so we're always on the lookout for guests of honors who will really immerse themselves into the convention experience. And there is nobody who deserves to be guest of honor more than Richard Turner. He has achieved so much. He has done so much for magic in the last three, four years with his documentary Delt and through his interviews on the Tim Ferriss podcast and in other places. So when we had the idea of, of bringing in Rich Turner, we didn't actually think he would accept because we're a small convention, just 400 people. And, and he is this superstar now, but he accepted. But not only that, he called us up like a day later and said, hey, can I do my show? And that, how cool is that, that he will get to do his his 90 minute show at the session? I think that's going to be kind of truly unique. Yeah, I was just with him. I'm in Los Angeles. This is a balcony in a hotel room. So sorry for the weird background. Um, and I was just with him, with him at CardCon, uh, where he performed and slayed, as usual, photo evidence of the great Richard Turner there. Um, and it was great to talk to him because, you know, this is somebody who still loves what they do. And that sounds obvious, but not naming names. There are a lot of people who are going through the motions at the twilight of their career. They're phoning it in. They want to do less. They don't want to be there, but they can't say no. Um, I love that he was, when he wasn't on stage, he was at a table jamming with people, chatting with them, giving advice, telling stories, and that's how it should be. And so he's a, he's a great guest of honor. And speaking of Great guest of honors. We should talk about the Magi Fest guest of honor. Yeah. And the Magi Fest guest of honor is somebody we've wanted to publicly appreciate pretty much our entire life together in magic, right? When we've been working together for the last, yeah, I think. There's an origin years. story here. Yeah, there really is an origin story. And we've been planning an event specifically around this origin story because uh, 1999, I think the year was, uh, Josh and I were flown to Las Vegas to perform in a TV show. Uh, all about young magicians. And the person who flew us to Las Vegas was the guest of honor for Magi Fest this year. It is, I'll do a drum roll. Go. Lance Burton. Um, Lance Burton, yes, the, the origin story really of why we're on this chat, why we're best friends, why Vanishing Inc. exists, all starts with Lance. So Lance uh, was a big TV magician at the time, had all these specials on NBC, and he wanted to do one called the Young Magician Showcase, which let's just take a pause in the story and say, what incredible admiration and generosity that a guy in the height of his fame is willing to pump the brakes and go, we won't just do another show with a big escape at the end and more magic around the world and featuring my Vegas show. I want to promote other young magicians and other magicians and share the spotlight, share the glory. I mean, huge. And to get TV experience at a young age when we were both, you know, not very good, really valuable learning experience. We got to work with Jim Steinmeier. So he brought us out to Vegas. We both were on this show. Um, it was, I think most people would agree, Andy's um, high point in his career, artistically speaking, on that show. It's pretty uh, true. And you're pretty much doing the same material uh, that you did on that show. Well, one of us evolved. Yeah. Um, I, I, was, um, I was just with Lance uh, a few weeks ago. A um, little picture there. <laughs> See, not the only one who can do pictures. Although apparently the only one who can't focus a picture. Um, and uh, <laughs> all the pictures yeah. came up. Uh, but there it is. Uh, Lance and me at a convention. Uh, and it looks like Photoshop, but... I yeah, mean, maybe it is. Time yeah. to verify it, so we'll run with it. Yeah, we'll go. There we go. It's focused on everything now. Uh, and Lance did a talk at the convention, and I've never seen Lance do a, a talk or a lecture before. And I was so connected with just how much ref of a professional, a professionalist, professional performer he is. Like even now, even after the Vegas shows, Lance put 
everything into that lecture. It was like watching Lance in Vegas with just how much preparation and energy and professionalism he put into that show and lecture. It was truly incredible. And it made me even more excited to have him at Magia Fest. Yeah, it's, it's been a long time coming. And in a weird way, I think we're the perfect people to interview him and, and tease it out because we both know him in a way that I think we can be pretty relaxed on stage. And there are things I'm excited to ask him about that aren't the usual things. So I think you're going to get a very personal side of Lance. Um, I saw Lance do a lecture that was one of the best lectures I've ever seen. That was when he was still performing in Vegas. He did a lecture for the youth group at um, World Magic Seminar in Vegas that he used to sponsor all these kids and, and coming out. And I went to that one time and he and Jim Steinmeier produced a set of lecture notes. Very rare. If you can ever track them down, they're exceptional. Are they called advice, Andy? I don't called? have them. I don't know. I think it's called advice. But anyhow, um, it's it was a great lecture. And here's the little bit of like 30 second wisdom that he pulled out of it, because I, I think this will be interesting to people. He said, very point blank, he said, you guys all saw my show last night. What'd you think of the floating Corvette trick? And we're all like, yeah, it was really good. He's like, it's not a good trick. Not a great trick. It's okay, but it's a little clunky. And I know that, but that's a marquee trick. What's a marquee trick? And he said, I want to leave my audiences with the best possible story I can tell. And at the end of Lance's thing, he has like this big ending and it's beautiful. And it's the, the thing where he's dueling in a sword battle. And then he ends up being the guy he was dueling. That's the real spiritual end of the show. But then he did this little encore piece where he would float away in a guitar and or in a guitar in a Corvette. Oh, um, so anyhow, he said, that's important. And I'm ending with a trick that maybe isn't as great as the previous trick because I want people leaving the show going, you got to see Lance Burton. He ends by floating away off stage in a Corvette. And the story is better than the trick. It's a story you can tell on a marquee. And I always thought that was a really interesting perspective. And it's such an interesting perspective that I'm going to give myself the heart emoji. Oh, no, 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 let no, me no. select it. Oh, man, no, 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 somebody no, no, no. give me a heart emoji um, on that story. You know, it's one of the, was one of the greatest memories for me, magically, uh, being on Lance's TV show. But that was replaced this year with Lance driving me around in his tour bus around Colon, Michigan. There's a little picture. I don't think it's going to focus again. Uh, but uh, that has replaced it. That was so much fun. Uh, and there's a chandelier on the tour bus. And I made a joke saying, uh, do you come down on that chandelier every morning? And sadly, nobody else on the tour bus got the joke. But uh, I was pleased with it. Um, so give me that. Come on. Uh, you can give him a heart emoji if you want. Maybe a laughing, crying emoji. Mm, it's not working out. Um, I want to see people in the chat, actually, since there are people in the chat. Let's uh, talk about your highlights from Magic Fest in the session. Uh, what perform Great story, Josh. Great. Okay, Simon, post about my story. Thanks, Simon. Simon gets it. Uh, but if anybody has any um, performer highlights that they have from the session of Magia Fest over the last few years, it could be fun to, to hear about them. Uh, yeah. But let's just quickly talk about the full lineup. Let's go for the session first of all. George tells me that he has an image uh, that's going to flash up with all of the lineup. But the session oh, God, lineup. George's uh, images. He's so good. This is only a partial lineup of the session. You'll see some FISM winners here. Oh, wait. Well, let's, over... let's pause here so we can we can expand on this, though. Um, so... Markobi, you see Markobi in the um, upper left. We saw Markobi at FISM. He won card magic, so we have a FISM champion with us. His act is totally surreal. It's like an act where he looks on purpose, totally unrehearsed, like he doesn't care, like everything's going wrong. And then the last trick he does is something you will never, ever, ever forget. Uh, yeah, uh, Morton Christian is someone who's been to the session for years and years, uh, and we've been big fans of his. Uh, he's a magician from Denmark. Uh, ever since we first met him, uh, I think Rune may have introduced us to, to Morton, and he absolutely tore the house down at FISM. Uh, he won the Comedy Award, and it's such a perfect act. It's so great. Uh, we also have uh, next up uh, Brian Watson, who Brian Watson is one of those unsung heroes of a plot. And that particular plot is the Cups and Balls. If you've never seen Brian perform Cups and Balls or talk about Cups and Balls, you are in for such a treat. He's yeah. 
just the expert in that area. Uh, and his thinking um, has made me re reevaluate many parts of the Cups and Balls. And I'm lucky to get to brainstorm with him on that plot all the time. So Yeah, and he's, he's also great. the creator and manufacturer of the Prokito box, which is a popular thing on our site. And um, I know many of you use and love it. Um, I also want to shout out Luke Germay. Uh, you know, at the risk of choosing your favorites among all the people here, I just got to say, what Luke is doing, if you go to the session, you know exactly what I'm talking about. What Luke is doing is unprecedented. I've never seen it at any other convention. He has been booked, I think, nearly every year consecutively and for for years, right, And Do you know if... Yeah. A, a I, I don't know the stats, here? but he's basically our resident lecturer now. We, we put him on every single year, and every single year he does a full new hour for magicians and mentalists new. He's been doing this stuff for a long time. And honestly, the joke is he's always better than he was the previous year. He's just always topping himself. And I've been able, so as Andy, we've seen a preview of what he's going to be doing. It's the most unexpected. And believe me, he does many unexpected things. For example, one year he came and he said, mentalists are always looking for ways to divine information, right? Like after the peak, after the glimpse, after the force, how do you divine the name of the person? And he did a whole thing about how he would do it with newspapers. He would tear up newspaper clips to read headlines and use that to do it. Another year, he did a whole lecture last year on three card pieces, mental card pieces. Another year, he did a performance of one concept that he just expanded on the whole time. The one he's doing this year is the best yet. Yeah. So unexpected and so great. He's been sharing all the material with us, and it's just been such a joy to see what he's going to be lecturing on. Uh, look, let's not go over everybody individually uh, for fear of, of taking up this whole live stream, but it's the best lineup ever. And you, you actually, what you see there is, is only a partial lineup. Uh, somebody we've just announced is Nick DeFat, who's going to be performing his show, but also lecturing. Uh, and we just hung out with Nick DeFat in Vegas and talked a lot about what he plans to do. It's and actually... It's actually Nick DeFat, Andy. It's not polite to call people fat. Um, no, 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 no. no that, my but... accent is Nick DeFat. And if Nick was here. And that, you know what? That's how I'm going to introduce him on stage. Nick no, DeFat. No, no, no. That's, um, uh, that's fat shaming. No, I'm also going to, uh, I think, maybe tell the Magi Pass story when I introduce him. Um, Do I know story this? Of, uh, the little souvenir he took from Magi Fest. Oh, yeah. We yeah. went to his house and saw his very impressive collection of magic he's the caretaker of all the tom mullica material and lots of other cool stuff and then he stole signage from our magi fest hotel what a guy yeah, yeah. so you know i added to his contract uh that he's allowed to steal signage from the session as well um we got a really great comment i want to read and maybe this can be the last person we talk about from the session um, Jason Boswell says, a few years ago, I had breakfast every morning at Magi Fest with Matt Baker before I really knew and appreciated who he was. I read part of his book, uh, The Buena Vista Shuffle Club, on the plane on the way out. As we were sharing coffee and croissants that first morning, I was like, wait, this is you. And he pulled out the book, which he, of course, signed. He was a terrific guy. He was um, a that's terrific a guy. What's that? He was a terrific guy. No, he still is. Yeah, he, he is. Um, he's got a terrible temper, so um, you don't want to ever make him angry. But um, no, I was corresponding with him this morning. Matt and I bond over several things, one of which is magic, another of which is, is basketball. We both share a love of NBA basketball. Um, for those who don't know, Matt is a mathematician and, and uh, math professor at Georgia Tech University, and his two passions are math and magic. He did a recent master class, which was fantastic full of really cool material and quirky principles underlying them. He's just really great to watch because he speaks with passion. He was taught by Simon Aronson, so you know what you're getting in that you are getting a trick that's got a fascinating method, a really intriguing premise, and a great presentation to go with it. He really thinks through all of his magic. And I'm so excited we lucked out because his schedule ended up being that he could be in the UK when that is. So um, people are going to see him. In his, I think his European debut has yes. never been in, on the continent doing magic. You know, one of my highlights of the retreats in Utah a couple of months ago was Matt sharing a trick uh, with the whole group uh, or with a group of magicians uh, with M&Ms. You know, this trick, right? You were there. Uh, what an incredible trick. It blew everybody away. It's on his master class, but I assume it's going to be in his lecture as well. So uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about Magic Fest. Uh, Let's see if George has an image from Magic Fest. What a classic George graphic I'm hoping oh, for. Oh, yeah. classic George. 
Um, okay, yeah, uh, so great. So the first thing let's pick out is all the people who have one FISM on this list. So Paul Gertner, Lance Burton, both FISM winners. Ruben Villagrand, this is interesting. Ruben is from Spain. Ruben won the uh, Ingenuity Prize, the Creativity Prize at FISM. So he is a FISM winner as well. And then this past year, um, Shudogawa won Micro Magic at FISM. And that's a big deal. Junwo Park uh, was a FISM winner coming from Korea. Eric Tate placed at FISM is a FISM winner. And uh, Morton Christensen won Parlor Mag or Comedy Magic, I believe, and is a FISM winner as well. So that alone, if that was our only lineup, that is like best gala show ever, ever, ever. And that's just the FISM winners. Yeah, someone I want to call out is Matt Pritchard, who if you've seen any of his videos online, uh, you will almost certainly be fooled because I always am. Uh, you are as well, Josh. They're, they're, they're incredible. But he's going to be talking about how he does these tricks. Uh, and he did the lecture at the session. It's actually going to be a different lecture than what he did at the session, but when he revealed how he did some of this stuff at the session, people were going crazy. So yeah. uh, it's definitely worth uh, worth coming just to MagiFest to see that. Uh, but also, I'm excited about Mark James. Mark James is a good friend of mine, and he absolutely kills when he does a show, and he's going to be performing his full evening show. He's going to be lecturing. Uh, I think he's going to be a real hit on the MagiFest lineup this year. Yeah, I think so, too. I want to call out two different people. One is David Gerard. So every year at both conventions, there's always somebody who perhaps you haven't heard of before. Maybe they don't have a big name because they haven't released a book or a master class or a video or a trick. Um, and they're the kind of person usually that I have to say to all my friends at the things like, you have to go. Don't go. Oh, I haven't heard of this. I don't, I don't know what this is. Yeah, be in the room. I mean, Ben Seidman, Harrison Greenbaum. Lots and lots of people, Adam Rubin in the past, they've kind of like held that spot where like nobody's quite sure what to make of it. And then they see it and like, whoa. And then, of course, every other convention books them. That spot is David Gerard. Like David Gerard is one of my favorite performers to watch. He is an exceptional entertainer. He's in the Bay Area and he does a mind reading show that is just so hard hitting and fun and funny and relatable. And um, his career has sort of exploded for the public, but not a lot of fellow magicians have seen him and you're going to get to see it and i think it's going to be um absolutely great and then the other one that i want to call out is margalit fox so this is a great story i read just ran on apple news one day i read about a new book by margalit fox she uh is a writer and journalist she worked for many years for the new york times she wrote a new book that came out called the confidence men so I ordered this book, I read it, and I was blown away. It's the story, I don't want to give away too much. It's the story of two magicians, a Brit and an Australian magician. Uh, you raised your hand. You, oh, you've also, you're a British just, magician. You just think you so show British us maybe magician. some more pictures of you with British magicians? Anything like that? Or? Um, no, I think I'm okay. Uh, all right, keep um, going. So anyway, these two magicians were in a POW camp in World War I in Turkey. <clears throat> and they escaped through mentalism they basically conned their way out by outsmarting their captors with mentalism and she wrote this amazingly entertaining book i mean if this book doesn't become a movie i'd be shocked and so i reached out to her and i was like this is weird because you're not a magician um but would you come to our conference and speak and she agreed and she's become a friend and all her writing is so great but um, this book in particular is awesome. Now, we opened this book up to our customers. It, was, it's, it is available on our site. Um, if you are coming, I know there's a lot of ifs. If you're coming to Magi Fest, and if you like great stories, and if you like history, I recommend you buy this book from our site, The Confidence Men. Read it so that you can watch her talk, get it signed. But you'll get so much more out of the talk if you know the story in advance. Um, yeah, no, she's so great. And we're, we're doing this series on the Vanishing blog and socials that's coming up uh, called Two Truths and a Lie. And uh, Margalit has done this where she's given us Two Truths and a Lie, and it's hilarious, and it's definitely worth watching. I just want to give a shout-out to Matt Pritchard for thanking me, for mentioning him. Uh, but I'm uh, sadly, Mark James didn't thank me. So uh, Matt Pritchard is now my new favorite Brit. So oh, okay. Maybe that. you'll post a picture of, of the two of you together or something. Yeah, I don't have one right now, but I'll see if I can find one. Um, just so excited. Oh, gone. Uh, but I, I can remember it. Just so excited to see and learn from all those amazing magicians going alone, but can't wait to meet online friends and make news. 
we should talk about this briefly before um, we talk about more performance. That's yeah. what's great about the session and Magio Fest. They are so friendly. And Josh and I have a mission, which is if we ever see anybody by themselves, just, you know, haven't, hasn't made any friends yet, we will hang out with them. We will introduce them to our friends and we will make sure that nobody leaves the session or Magio Fest having uh, not made new friends in Magic because that's so yeah. important. But truth is, we don't need to do that all that often because everybody is so friendly at both of these events that uh, as soon as you stand by yourself, somebody jumps on you to show your trick. It's it's such an incredible vibe. Yeah, very welcoming vibe. Hey, Jason Boswell asks a great question. I'm bringing my almost 11-year-old daughter with me to Magi Fest for the first time this January. It's her big surprise Christmas gift. Amazing. Um, can you talk about the kids aspect this year? Yeah, but first let me just say, and this is not hyperbole, this is like a meaningful thing in my life. Magi Fest genuinely changed my life. My dad brought me when I was eight years old, so just a little younger than your daughter, Jason, um, and it changed the trajectory of my life. I mean, something clicked there. I looked around and I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. Like, I didn't know what a magic lecture was. I didn't know about magic shops because I was born in a small town in Ohio. And um, everything about Magi Fest just totally excited me. And I look back on that first Magi Fest as being life changing. So now to be able to, to organize it with Andy, what a treat. So yes, to answer your question, we have a youth program at both conventions. So regardless of which side of the pond you're on, listen carefully. Um, we want to make it so that any young magician, 18 or under at the time the conventions take place, can attend for free. And all that you have to do to do this is do uh, a, a scholarship application on our site, which the details are there, but it involves performing a show for charity and donating that show. And our theory there is that you spread magic through a young magician to your community. We want to give you more ammunition and, and ability to, to hone your craft. So you don't have to do the scholarship route. You can, of course, buy a ticket as well. But the youth program at the convention is really great. So what we do is we pull the entertainers, the ones that you saw, and many of those people spend time with the youth events. And these are youth only events for just the youth and their guardians. Um, we have special giveaways for them. We have special talks for them. And uh, it's just, it's a really great time. Um, and they this get year, the, the Magi Fest uh, youth event is being hosted by three people, uh, Matt and Jason from Vanished Inc, who are really uh, special. It's really special to us that they're part of this uh, youth event because they were youth scholars back in the day. Uh, and now they, they work for Vanished Inc. Uh, and also Chris Hendricks uh, is going to be involved as well, um, who is also hosting our gala show at Magi Fest. Uh, so that's going to be really fun. And in the session, um, we uh, have another FISM magician. Uh, Gaia Rossi is going to be hosting the youth event, um, hopefully with uh, Harry DeCruz as well, who hosted it last year. And it's so great that we get these magicians who are able to share magic with the young magicians, introduce everybody, and also... This is, I think, so important because I would have loved this when I was a kid to introduce them to the performers as well. If, if there's somebody that they are a big fan of or really wanted to get to know, they will introduce them and make sure that they get some proper face time with them, not just a, a photo opportunity or, or just a quick hello. Like our performers, the reason we select them is because we know they will sit down with the young magicians. And there's an amazing uh, photo from last year's Magio Fest of Jason England sat up with all of the kids showing them like, cool gambling stuff. And he, he put a holdout on one of the young magicians and was teaching him how to use the holdout. It was yeah. one of the most memorable And that memorable kid ones. is actually in prison now for trying to cheat at cards. Yeah, um, thanks, Jason. So, so we're really proud of that. Yeah. All right. I did enjoy going to Jason England's house uh, earlier this year. Got, went to his bathroom. And what was in uh, in the garbage can in his bathroom? Your book. So that was fun. Thanks, Jason. Uh, everything about that story is true, except it was Andy's book in the toilet. Uh, it was both of our books, but I missed mine out because it made for a better story. Okay. Yeah. Um, Jared Blake asks, I don't have kids. Can I sign up to be a guardian? Um, no. And also the FBI has some questions. <laughs> I didn't know why, whether you were going to go there or not, but I'm glad you did. That's very funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so look, it's so exciting that we are almost at convention season. The, the January couple of weeks for us is so much fun because we get to just immerse ourselves in magic at these conventions. And a key part of these conventions is that we organize the conventions we want to attend. Uh, so 
we we make it really accessible because that's what we want in a convention we make the lineup completely varied because that's what we like to see at conventions and we make it really fun i think that's the key thing we yeah have such, such a great time the one thing we haven't mentioned which i think is important before we would part ways on this is um the dealers uh both conventions have not just great dealers but different dealers than you would see at most conventions we sort of tend to gravitate toward um toward people who do unique things so it's not like 10 dealers that all have the same group of tricks and stuff it's really actually a lot of dealers who do handmade stuff or that specialize in one thing or another yeah there are other conventions where you can go and see 300 dealers in one room uh, but we like to curate we like interesting dealers that uh, you won't get to see elsewhere uh, so that's really important to us um, somebody has just asked a question we can bring it online. Will Magia Fest ever be available to be streamed and available online? Well, I can tell you that not this year. Uh, it won't be available. Uh, maybe one year in the future, but that's a minefield that we're not really uh, ready to address yet. So Pandora's box that once we open is going to be a big one to, uh, to work on. So it, all of these conventions are an in-person experience. And you know what? When you're there in person, I think you might see why, because a big part of it is the vibe of the convention as well as the lectures. Yeah. Um, Kevin is asking a very interesting question. Um, Andy, maybe you want to field this one? <laughs> I'm scared. I haven't looked at it yet. Okay. <laughs> hey, Kevin, uh, here we go. I'm going to answer your question. I'm going to read it in real time. Let's go. Uh, this is my first magic convention. Wanted to take it all in and make the make all the exhibits. Is there a workshop session like sawing someone in half properly? Uh, well, you know what, Kevin, uh, my good friend there, uh, or my new friend, uh, I'm sorry to say you missed out because this year at the session, Mike Caveney was one of our two guests of honors, Tina Leonard, Mike Caveney, and he did a whole lecture on the history of Soaring in Half, uh, but check out his book. Uh, there will be no Soaring in Half discussions uh, at the session or Magi Fest that I'm aware of. Um, there, there are workshops, though, at Magi Fest, and this is actually a good thing to mention. So this is many people's favorite part of the whole convention. On the Sunday after Magi Fest, we have two workshops, one by Mark Calabrese and one by Shoot Ogawa. And it's an extra charge event, but it's just a hundred bucks. And it's basically like taking a lesson, a private lesson with one of these guys. So we limit the attendance down to uh, a smaller amount of people. And you get all those people in a room together and you spend three hours doing a totally bespoke customized lesson. Um, it's one of our favorite times. Now we're biased because by that time, like all our responsibilities are over and we can actually breathe easy and, and actually enjoy and watch. But we go every year and we sit in this room and we ask questions. Hey, what do you do when you're doing this trick and you get here? And it's unlike just watching somebody do something. You take out the cards and the coins and follow along. So I'd really encourage you. I think a really, really good use of money is the workshops on the Sunday. Yeah. And I always expect people to be like asleep in those workshops because they are. So, uh, but everybody is just so immersed in, in what's going on that it, it's yeah, it's a really great energy. And I love being at those workshops. It's always a highlight for me. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, Josh, look, I'm going to see you in January. Uh, if, you, if you're willing, come on over to London and uh, we can maybe hang out there. Um, yeah, you're free on like the 13th to the 15th, maybe. Yeah, I would love to be there. Uh, would you like to be my guest at Magi Fest? January 26th uh, to the 28th? You know what? If you'll have me, I'll be there. Yeah, okay, okay, cool. Only if you throw in George Luck. George can come. Mark's coming as well. Um, yeah, we have uh, we have a big team coming to Major Fest, actually. This is a good time to meet the Vanished Ink crew at the convention. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, great. Um, all right. Well, look. All right. Well, we're very excited to see you. You can keep posting uh, questions on the Facebook page, or of course, if you have any questions at all, our customer service team happy to answer those for you. Um, but otherwise, we will see all of you guys uh, in January. Yeah, it's really exciting. See you soon. Bye, Josh.